viewers, you join me on another out of spec guide video where uh, I'm going to be walking through all of the different Porsche Taycan specifications and the options I think you should order. This is probably going to be a long video because there's so many ways that you can spec and configure the new facelifted J1.2 or Porsche PA Taycan. And uh, basically, I'll be walking you through the options I think are worth it are not worth it, and we'll probably build two different specifications. We'll build a sedan kind of on the cheap or maybe like with the least amount of options to at least get by so you have something somewhat nice, and then we'll build the dream spec uh, wagon Tycon, I think. Uh, of course, uh, the cool thing with Porsche is you have a million options that you can choose. That's all part of the customization and having the only one spec like yours. And a lot of dealers will go conservative and spec normal cars on the lot, but I think it's fun to personalize these cars, and uh, certainly you can go crazy. But let's start by trying to keep it in check, and then we'll build the dream spec spec afterwards. So this is everything building the Porsche Taycan, the new one here on Out of Spec Guide. Before we get into building the new Taycan, I also want to mention that there are pretty good deals on used Taycans, the pre-facelift cars. Now, what's interesting is even the new standard battery, there's a standard battery, performance battery, and then the performance battery plus the large battery, even the new standard battery is better in almost every metric than the old big battery. So the new, you're starting off in the standard car now with 270 kilowatt peak charging, but it holds it longer and the car weighs less and it's more efficient with new motors. And I'll have an out of spec podcast episode coming very soon, uh, documenting all of the nitty gritty changes. I've also done Tycon videos three on the new facelift already. I've had a chance to drive the car. I've had a chance to be one of the only American uh, uh, video creators to be able to film the car for you uh, in a studio in Germany. So, um, you know, take a look at all those videos on out of spec reviews. I did a range test, charging test, and a full tour of the vehicle. Now we're just into the nitty gritty specifications. Uh, I've played around on the Porsche website for far too long. So I think what I, what, what's important right off the bat is, uh, they're not EPA range rated yet, but they have significantly more range. If you look here, these are the four sedan models that are being launched. You have the, the Taycan rear wheel drive 4S turbo and turbo S there's no GTS at the moment, but I can imagine that will come. And there will also likely be a spicier version coming. Uh, and I think we'll hear about it pretty soon. I, I personally don't know anything about it, but I'm hoping to know more soon for, uh, the, the spicy stuff. So, Anything labeled new on the Porsche website for 2025 model year, these are the new cars. You can tell they're new because they have the new wheel designs. They're standard with the power charge port. They have the new front end design, which to be honest, I, I actually think the old car looks just as good, if not even a bit more authentic, a little bit more what a Taycan should be. You can see here, these are the old models, old. I mean, the car is still, um, I think they're just switching production over to the new cars in Zuffenhausen right now. So again, I think if you can get a good deal on one of the older cars, if really range is not an outright consideration and you're not the going for the max driving performance, the old car is still incredible. I saw a Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo almost fully spec had $40,000 worth of options on it go for sale on cars and bids for 88 grand. And I think they're just going to continue going down. So I don't know. New car is going to be better for sure. If you're leasing it, or if you got the money and you want the, the best charging curve in the business, great efficiency. I'm not telling you not to get a new one. I'm just saying <laughs> be prepared for the big cost differential for used Tycons versus new ones. Okay. What we need to decide here is which drivetrain is sort of the least, I don't know, livable. What we're trying to do is, is say, what, what are all the things you need and nothing you don't? And I think ultimately you go big battery, especially if you're, if you're specking up to a new car, we're going to go big battery in this thing. But I don't think we need to go up to a Taycan Turbo or Turbo S. We're going to do that for the Dream Spec Cross Turismo. It really comes down to... I think if we're going standard build, the Taycan rear wheel drive, full range spec, single motor, still has the two speed rear axle, interestingly, um, but it should help with some efficiency maybe on the highway. Or do we go 
4S, which adds the front motor, might even add some standard features. And again, you get the push to pass uh, function that unlocks more power when you get the big battery in the 4S. And um, I don't know. I think ultimately, if you're going to go up into a new car, skip the rear wheel drive, even though it's a great awesome long distance cruiser i think you go 4s an additional motor much more power a whole second zero to 60 off uh, and, and it just unlocks winter ability loose road ability and even performance pulling you out of some corners I, I think it's worth it so let's build a 4s and let's do a reasonable 4s build uh, now the first thing to mention are there are entirely new colors and wheels for this year and so you can go for one of the standard black or white colors, non-metallic. I think a blacked out Taycan looks really cool. This is all personal preference, honestly. But then you get the grays. I think Porsches are fun. Have them in colors. But I think you don't need to spec up to one of these $3,000 colors, although shade green's cool. Oak green's amazing. We're going to build the Cross Turismo in, in oak green, of course. But I, I actually love this. It's called Provence color. Um it looks very purple on this configurator. It actually almost has a lot of gray in it. I'm not sure it would be the color I would personally choose, but if it was Alyssa or something like that, I, I think this is a really cool color in person. And, um, you know, we've done a lot with Anna's Neptune blue Tycon frozen berry, still an amazing color. I saw one here in town recently, gentian blue, I think played out a little bit frozen blue, really cool color as well. But I think Provence, you can do whatever color you want. I think this looks great in person. There's also a, a really cool feature on this configurator that we can launch a 360 degree sort of interactive, um, one that really gives you a little bit better chance to see the color. And if you watch my Tycon full tour video in the studio, this was the color uh, that was the standard car on display. Is that true? No, it was the Macan. The Macan base car had this color on it. And that's where I saw it and really loved it. So very cool. We can change the background, I believe. Yeah, coming back in, we can change day and night when we're in the uh, normal mode. So pretty cool. Just loving the configurator. They went all out on this one. You really get a sense of it. And again, the color's personal preference. I love this color. So let's go with it. Okay, next up. Of course, you can do paint to sample or paint to sample plus. I think you can go crazy with the colors. Honestly, if you can't find something you, you like or don't like in the normal paint to sample, I mean, there's so many things in here. Um, it's just amazing how many colors you can do. It just goes on and on and on. You can see it's even like bricking my computer how many options there are. Um, then, of course, you can do paint to sample plus and say, like, make it any color you want. Wheels are important for the Taycan, and this is where things can get pretty expensive. Uh, there's two ways to think about wheels. You can go for the aero wheel set which um, of course maybe can be your winter set or your road trip set. And then you can have a really cool wheel design like this 21 inch RS spider um, wheel. But now you're dropping five grand on wheels. They do look good though, don't they? These are basically like that GTS or I had a, maybe they're not the GTS wheel, but I, I reviewed a 4S on these wheels. And to me, the wheels make or break the car visually. I mean, truly make or break it. I've never been a personal huge fan of the Mission E wheels. They've also been the least efficient wheel to get on the Taycan. And I think certainly they add some looks. The new Mission E wheel is better than the old Mission E wheel in terms of efficiency. Um, yeah, I... Don't think I really like the 20 inch wheel options either. They just have a bit too much rubber on them. So I think this is where we really do need to spend some money. And I think the perfect choice for this car is actually going to be this 21 inch aero design wheel. It's a cool wheel. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on it for you. Let's pull it around to the other side. There we go with some light on it. How sick is this configurator? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's a cool wheel. I've seen this wheel in person. The engineers were saying this is almost as good, almost as good as the 19 inch arrow wheel for efficiency. And yeah, this is, this is awesome. I think you spend the 4,600 bucks. You'll be living. You got to look at this thing every day. Um, that's the way to go for it. But again, the other option is to go 
19 inch standard wheels and, uh, you know, get a set of Martian wheels on the aftermarket or something like that for the track days or performance. I think a lot of people will be leasing these or, um, you know, just wanting to keep them relatively stock. This is the best wheel for the Taycan, in my opinion, balancing range and everything like that. Of course, you can make the wheels whatever color you want. I'm not sure if you can even do that with the uh, these arrow ones. No, they don't let you do it with these particular wheels, but I think they're fine. That silver and black combination is great. Um, you can have the wheel center caps with the colored Porsche crest on them. $190. Again, from my preference, I kind of like the monochromatic look, uh, with them, just the black and white, but maybe with the Provence color, we're going for something that pops a little bit more, 190 bucks. Sure. Why not? You can choose, of course, all season tires or the summer performance. I always recommend go with the OE tire and then swap to winters if you need to. The interior, okay, the black interior is um, boring. Just, it's pretty black. It's livable, but I don't know. I just don't love it so much. The uh, On the other side, the leather interiors are crazy expensive on the 4S. Uh, as you spec up Turbo and Turbo S, these options become less expensive. I don't think it's worth $4,700 to go for an interior that you have to take more care of. And, you know, you could go crazy on the deviated stitching. Again, I don't think you need it. What I would do is go for the standard interior in black slash limestone beige. I like a light color interior. This is totally up to you. The slate gray is good as well. I like the dual tone of this. My preference, of course, is to actually do this um, leather interior and black slash chalk. You get a finer grain texture on the uh, leather surfaces. This Blackberry, I've driven a car with this as well. Really cool. Maybe it goes pretty well with Provence. The thing is, you don't know if this is a slightly different color than the Provence color on the outside. So it could get a little bit crazy, but I kind of like living on the edge with these specs. But again, I think we're going to stay away. My recommendation is to stay away from the real big boy leather stuff going crazy on the interior, um, you know, and build the car to drive really well and have the features you want. I think this uh, light color interior for most people is totally fine. It's hard wearing. You can put the dogs in it. It's no problem. If you want to go for the slate gray, I'll show you here. You absolutely can. I think it looks a little bit better than the black. It's not super dark everywhere. And so either of those options, personal preference for me, you know, I always like the light color interiors myself. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then, of course, you can go all the way up to the club leather, which is like the real fine grain. I don't typically recommend it, though. It, it is really nice. I uh, The 4S we did the Cannonball with had the Olea Club leather, but yeah, not, not really worth it. Okay, so in terms of seating, again, we're going for a standard-ish build. We're doing everything you need and nothing you don't. We've already splurged on the wheels, so let's try and save some money where we can. I've driven and spent a lot of time in all three seats. My personal preference is the 14-way seats, but only because you can get massage. But by the time you add massage, we're in for three grand on the seat and the massage. Honestly, the Comfort 8-way seats are totally fine. I believe they still have the thigh extension, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and fore and aft position, maybe seat height, seat angle, backrest angle, and fore and aft. Maybe it, it doesn't. Mm, yeah, it doesn't actually look like it does from the 3D configurator here, but these seats are totally fine. They get on the ground nice. They feel comfortable. They're not extremely sporty or crazy, but th my recommendation, comfort seats all the way. Uh, and then we come to the back seat, actually. And inside the back seat is an interesting option where the Taycan is a four seater out of the box. And it has this little, don't know if you can see or if I can even show you back here, but it has this little like cubby compartment in between the seats that's like of no use. I think for resale value, you go for the rear two plus one seats, adds a center um, headrest, puts a seatbelt there. And, you know, I've done three wide in the back of a Taycan. It's really tight. But I just think, you know, you have to think about the exit strategy. It's 480 bucks. You can put another person in the car in a pinch if you need to. It's the way to go. Um, like I mentioned, massaging seats require uh, ventilated seats. So ventilated seats are 850 
plus the 1500 for comfort memory. And then you'd have to go for another thousand if we bundle it all up to get the massage with ventilation. I don't think it's worth spending the money on all of that. I do think ventilated seats are worth it, but they make you spec up to the 14 ways. So I think we leave it off. Um, it's a really great option. Again, if, if seats and cooled seats are important to you, there you go. It is a bit of a shame. I'll say it out loud that a, that a base Tesla model three for 30 something thousand dollars comes with ventilated seats. And on your $127,000 Porsche, and we haven't even gotten to the rest of the options, you got to spend 1500 bucks to get it. Yeah, it's rough. That's, that's the Porsche way. And that's where they make their money. I'm sure. And you know what? A lot of people spec it without even, uh, going for it. I don't think it's worth the money. The cars I've driven most Taycons without uh, ventilated seats, unless it's really hot where you are, save the cash. But if you are going to go and get them, you may as well s- step up because they make you get the comfort seats or the, the 14 way or the 18 way seats, get the massage in the 14, my preference. The 18 ways are just a little tight. Exterior packages. I, you can skip all the sport design stuff. I'll just show you really quick. It does look kind of cool. You get these little painted fins down here. I don't know. I think it's definitely not worth it, especially not in carbon fiber for seven grand. Let's move on. The car looks pretty good as is. I don't think you need those things at all. The sport design side skirts just add a little painted flare in there. Actually, Anna's car has those on there for some weird reason, her Neptune blue one. But I think, uh, yeah, you don't don't need any of this extra stuff. The one thing that does look kind of nice, I think, that sets the car apart slightly, and it may not work for this particular build because we have silver on the wheels and silver, this sort of brushed aluminum around the windows, is the window trim in high gloss black. You can see I can bring that in. It just gives it this sportier edge around but i think when uh it depends if you're going for a black car i would definitely do that but for this provence color i kind of like it here just in this uh brushed aluminum look around the side i think that's pretty classy pretty nice so let's continue we don't need door handles in gloss black or under door puddle light projectors again we're keeping it simple um you know model designation on the rear don't need it. Honestly, I kind of like the idea of taking the taking the badge off the back. If you wanted to, it's a no-cost option. They just won't put it on, and then no one knows what spec Tycon you really got. So it's up to you. We'll leave it as 4S for now, but uh, just kind of a cool little thing. This is where we should spend the money. This is where the driving experience, you're buying a Tycon because you're, drive, you're a driving enthusiast. If you just wanted an electric car that had a lot of range, you'd buy a Model 3 for a quarter of the price. So this is where the money is going. And my recommendation right off the bat is to get rear axle steering. It completely changes the feel of the car at low speed. It's much more agile. On the highway, it can elongate the wheelbase in a sense, but just mostly that low speed maneuverability, I think is, is wonderful, magical, and it's only 1300 bucks. That's actually a pretty good deal. The Porsche uh, torque vectoring plus essentially allows the car to distribute the power uh, up to the left and right side of the rear tire. So uh, for me as a driving enthusiast, Absolutely. I want to be able to slide this car around, have the real active diff in the back doing the thing. It's really awesome. So yes, Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, only if you're a driving enthusiast. I think you're buying a Taycan for the most hardcore driving experience. Go for it. The Porsche Active Ride is $7,140. I've detailed this function on my full tour and the Active Ride essentially is four hydraulic electric, electro hydraulic motors that feed high pressure hydraulic fluid into the dampers to infinitely have variable roll stiffness control and wheel stiffness control independent of each wheel. There's no sway bars. There's no sway bar disconnect because there's no sway bar. And it really gives the car an incredible character on the road. And it also will raise up when you open the doors and lean into corners if you want to have some extra gimmicky functions. The standard suspension is air on this car now. Air suspension as standard. Uh, I think that's fine. I don't think many people in day-to-day will actually even notice the benefits of Porsche Active Ride unless when you you know open the door and it raises up. I think that's going to be the, the biggest feature for people. And honestly, it's not worth seven grand for most people. For me, on my personal build, 
only if I was specking one up highly, yes. But what's crazy is the new air suspension is better in almost every metric. I can't actually show you the charts that Porsche showed me because it was like their engineering charts. But the new base suspension is almost better in every way than the old top spec PDCC everything maxed out suspension. So I think let's keep standard suspension. Let's keep it in check. The Sport Chrono package, this starts to make sense because you can now have more control over the battery pack with Sport Plus. You get a smaller steering wheel. You can have traction control that you can back halfway off. And I believe when we spec the big battery, it requires the Sport Chrono package to have push to pass. So it will unlock 70 kilowatts of power roughly for a quick burst mid acceleration or coming out of a corner. You want a bit more. It's 1300 bucks just for the sport plus alone for the thermal management on the battery pack. I would a hundred percent go with that. The Porsche uh, surface coated brakes are always an interesting one. I actually think it's probably the worst braking package on the Taycan. The ones I, I wouldn't do it on my car. Um, I think they're pretty, pretty weird brake pedal feeling. It, it is nice. They produce less brake dust and they do have some performance benefits, but you do have to replace the rotors eventually, uh, and at a higher frequency than the ceramics, but it's still really expensive to replace these rotors. So my recommendation, I don't really like the way the white calipers look. It's a cool technology, but I would not spec it on my Taycan. I've driven the cars with them and I've always thought, eh, the brake pedal is a bit weird on the tuning. Now, for 2025, they have altered the brake pedal tuning slightly. Maybe it's better. I don't know. I would stick without it personally. Uh, now, on the 4S, the brake calipers are red. That's how you can tell that you got a 4S instead of a base car. But I always like to be a little bit stealthy. And I think with the Provence color, the car looks better with the black calipers. $900 to have them in black. That would be my preference. Now, if you did a fully blacked out Taycan, uh, 4S, I think it would look better with the red calipers. So that is very color dependent. For this particular color, I'm going to select the black caliper just so that that, you know, purple-ish color on the outside can really pop. Here's where you need to spend some money. $5,570 is all it takes to upgrade from 83 kilowatt hour usable, 83.6 to 97 kilowatt hour usable. 100% worth every penny to go with the big battery. So here's where the, the Sport Chrono with push to pass comes in. And uh, the full upgrade all around is $5,710 to get the performance battery plus. 100% we want the performance battery plus. And the, the reason is forget even the uh, push to pass function. Forget even the range, which you're going to, you know, I hypermiled a Taycan on aero wheels, rear wheel drive to 465 miles. This one, 4S, 70 miles an hour. You're going to be in that 350 to 375 range, I think, in this spec uh, at 70, which is very, very reasonable and a lot more range than the previous car. What matters is the charging performance. You can charge at 320 kilowatts on this battery pack to 65%. Well, I should say 320 kilowatts to about 50%, 55%. At 65%, you dip under 300 kilowatts, which is crazy. And so it is, I think, the benchmark for charging and 100% would recommend the Performance Battery Plus. That is worth every penny. Only 5,500 bucks. You got to go for it. Here's where I think you can actually save some money. You'll notice that all of the headlights show HD matrix design headlights on the upgrade. That is because still currently Porsche has not found a way to get matrix lights active in the U S some people are telling me it's legal. Some people are telling me, yes, there's nothing saying it's illegal, but there's no spec to say that it is legal. I don't know if they'll be able to software update them retroactively, but to be honest, the standard headlight is still very bright. I actually think that the base running lights look better than the HD matrix. Now, this is just my preference. Those are cool, but I think this is like a little bit classier if we go for just the standard light. I don't know if it's up. It's up to you. $1,700. Again, we're trying to keep it, you know, a reasonable cost here. We're going to stick with the standard headlights for this build. We'll put the nice ones on the really nice build. Again, personal preference comes into a lot of this. Same thing with the light strip illumination in the back. I think uh, that this Porsche logo can light up. I, I don't think it's worth it personally. 
Uh, the one thing that I do like quite a bit is the glass roof. So I think we're going to go for the standard panoramic uh, roof in glass. Really nice. There is a variable light control roof that basically allows you to change the dimming function with a slider on the screen. You can put up cool patterns like the configurator shows you at the moment. It's so much more expensive. Uh, let's just keep it to normal glass in this car. Um, there is an option for thermally and noise insulated glass. Uh, I always call this option the cell phone reception killer because this will like turn down your cell phone reception a few notches, but it also makes the car much quieter and much more resistant to heat from the outside. $1,130. I actually think the, the real sweet spot here is to get Again, if you're going crazy, get it on the car, but we're keeping a normal build. The car's already pretty quiet. Just get window tint, whatever the max legal is in your state, get a ceramic tint, and that will take care of most of the heat rejection needed. I don't think you need to spend $1,130 on this, especially for like that windshield coating that comes as part of it that kills your cell reception and your radar detector and your toll passes. It's cool. Would I want it? Yes. If I was buying a used car and it didn't have it as a deal breaker, Absolutely not. Let's continue. Interior. This is where you can go insane with deviated stitching and wood and crazy stuff. And again, not worth it. Stay away. My recommendation, you bought a Tycon to drive it when you're sitting in the seat and looking forwards when you're driving, you're not going to notice half of these things. So I would say let's skip all of the deviated stitching, the interior trim and different materials, carbon fiber for 2,500 bucks, wood for two grand, man, you can just go insane center console and race techs, interior accents and different colors. Again, I love the standard interior on this car. There's not much more it needs. Now the purple and the neodyme accents could work pretty well 650 bucks you get this sort of purple and gold theme but it is a bit gaudy it's a bit las vegas i think we keep it classy let's just get rid of that um the storage package what does this give you a storage tray yeah this one in the front center console yeah this probably seems worth it. I think one of the things it does, at least in the old Tycon, was in this area below the screen, uh, there they added a little lip so you can actually put things underneath here rather than having an open space. Let's see if it does that in the configurator. I don't see it updating. I'm fairly certain that's what the storage package does as well. That's what I would do uh, because you want to put keys there, cell phone, wallet, whatever behind this screen. And if you don't have the storage package, stuff just flies out. So 280 bucks. Sure. Let's get the storage package. Again, more deviated stitching, seat belts in different colors. Ah, it's just, you could go crazy. It's just not worth it. The one thing that is kind of cool is actually the race tech's wheel. Now I've always been a leather steering wheel guy and I actually hated the idea of an Alcantara or Porsche speak race techs, microfiber steering wheel. However, um, I drove one up to Norway, a Taycan cross Turismo turbo cross Turismo that had it. And I fell in love with the wheel. It doesn't get greasy. You can clean it. They last longer than leather. As long as you maintain it, I'm looking at all of these used Tycons online and every car I'm like, looks great. I'd have to order a new steering wheel. I hate greasy steering wheels. And here for 200 bucks, you get a heated wheel with race techs. I think that's worth every bit of $200. As long as you take care of it, you know, you don't want to use lotions on this, just like you don't want to use lotions on a leather wheel. I think it's a cool option. It's something you interact with every day and it really makes the car feel special and it doesn't get as hot in the summer. It doesn't get as cold in the winter. I, again, I was a hater. I was like, I would never want that in my car. And then I drove one and I said, okay, I want that in every car. So Leave it at its personal preference. Go to the Porsche dealer, feel it, play around with it. It doesn't feel great on first glance, but when you live with it, you're like, wow, this is really nice. So that's the wheel I would do. Let's see what other options we have here. Vehicle keys painted. Um, vehicle keys being painted is nice if you have multiple Porsches at home, uh, which is, you know, might sound crazy to some people, but also totally normal to other people. Um, and it's just a good way to know what car is what. So you can spend the money there if you want. You can also just get a key ring and save yourself the money. Um, you can go and put, you know, we could do out of spec door sill guards if we wanted to go crazy. 
But again, I really think save the money on the interior stuff and just keep the car legit. Here's where we should spend some more money on the technology. Technology and performance, that's what I like about this car. Night vision, you don't need it. It's not actually that useful. It's really cool. But even on a high spec build, it's hard, hard to do that. The surround view with parking is pretty nice. Now, I think this is worth going $1,600 for the surround view. The reason is we spec'd up the 21 inch wheels. We have the rear steer. We're going to have the most ease of access in a tight space, but you still don't want to clip anything. And even with rear steer, you don't want to like turn too sharp pulling away from something because you could have some tail swing. I think it's really nice to have the overview on the display. I'm pretty used to it. I like it. To me, it's worth $1,600. We're already a $140,000 car. We should have a 360 degree view cam. The backup camera still sucks in this car, to be honest. It's in the wrong space. It's too wide. It's not that useful. Let's just go for the surround view so we can get that really nice overhead view that works well and then go for it. Another thing that this car is built for is long distance road tripping. Um, I should mention the remote park assist, by the way, this is just so you can like drive it forward and back from your phone. I've had Teslas that have this feature and yeah, it's like cool, but I wouldn't do it. At minimum, make sure you get adaptive cruise control because like I was saying, this car is built for the long distance cruising, really hammering the miles, charging fast, driving fast, and you want to have adaptive cruise. I think you can spec adaptive cruise and then option active lane keeping with Inno Drive or even just active lane keeping without Inno Drive um, on the function on demand website to software download it. I've done a whole video on that process. I did it with a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. We did it with Anna's car when we picked it up. These are the things we've covered. Um, I don't think Inno Drive is actually that useful. Inno Drive is just like the speed adaptation, goes to speed limits, slows down for corners. But the active steering is really nice. Honestly, if you're getting a Taycan, we're all the way in on this thing. It's going to be the road tripper. They've improved lane centering for the new cars. It now has traffic jam assist. You don't have to touch the wheel at low speed. Go all out. Get all the driver assistance. I, it's so annoying and frustrating to me that I see so many Taycan people that option their cars. Like my friend owns a Taycan Turbo with night vision, but no, not even adaptive cruise. And I'm like, who specced this car? He picked it up used. But I'm like, who specced this car? It's crazy. So, yeah, just go for all the driver assistance. It's 2024. Look, I'm as much of a driving enthusiast as anyone. I love tearing up canyons. But if I'm just sitting on the highway, especially in traffic or just cruising up and down, you know, I-25 here in northern Colorado, I just want the car to stay in the middle of the lane, keep a distance to the car in front of me. It just removes that mindless, annoying workload of lane centering from the driver, puts it on the car. Yeah, 100% get all the driver assistance. If you want to be really cheap about it, spec at least adaptive cruise control. And then you can option for like 600 bucks uh, just active lane keeping in the function on demand download portion of the website. Um, but I think if you're ordering the car from the factory, go for it. There will be a lot of cars on the lot if you're picking one up that have just have adaptive cruise. You can see because it'll have the sensor in the bottom part of the front bumper. Those are okay because then you can still buy that car and option lane centering, active lane keep in Porsche speak to go on the car later, which to me and I think our audience is really important. Okay, interior comfort. There are some nice functions in here. Head up display, $1,670. I would caution against that uh, for the most part. It's a very small head up display. It doesn't help you that much and it makes the dashboard look kind of ugly from the outside. Let's just see if we can do an exterior view here really quick. Let's move to the outside. Let's come around here. Let's zoom in on the dash just so I can show you this. Um, and I'm gonna select head up display. And you just look at this. It makes the whole dash look big and bulgy and weird, I think. So I'm gonna spec it without, just because it's money. It's a small benefit. It's not so needed. And I think this looks a little bit cooler, a little bit slimmer. Uh, and all those things. Soft, soft closed doors, $720. You don't need them. Ionizer, don't need it. Advanced four zone climate control, you don't need it. How many, if you're really putting people in the back of the car a lot, don't get a Tycon sedan. Get a, get a cross Turismo or a sport Turismo and then get the four zone. But if no one's going in the back seat, just keep those vents off anyway. You just don't need it. Smoking package doesn't help you in this car at all with anything. Certain Porsches it does. This one, no. 
and um, preparation for Porsche dash cam front and rear. Yes, it just adds the USB ports so you don't have to hardwire anything. $130 just takes care of it. Absolutely. Uh, you should do that because you should have a dash cam, I believe, in your car. Audio and communication. Passenger display. It's something Alyssa loves. So again, she, we would probably spec it on our car just because she's always shotgun. She loves the passenger display. Uh, but for most people, it does not add the driver any benefit. The passenger didn't pay for the car. You don't need it. It actually uses some energy, of course. Not, not really worth it. At minimum, spec the Bose sound system because the bass sound system, I've used it before, is it's okay. It's actually better than some people say. It's just not good. The Bose is totally livable. That's all you need and nothing you don't. And that's what we're going for with this build. The Burmester, crazy, big subwoofer, great sound system. But again, it's $7,000 option. Don't need it, I don't think. Porsche Rear Seat Entertainment, don't need any of that crap. The Porsche Electric Sports Sound has been re revised for this year. As much of a sound hater as I am in electric cars, the Porsche one's actually kind of cool, and I hate that I'm saying this, but it's because they emulate the noises from the electric motors and then reproduce them and synthesize them into the cabin. So they're starting from a natural place, but not from, they're not actual noises that the car is making, of course, because it's amplified by speakers. $500, I think you leave it off. It most of the time when you're cruising, it's just annoying. It's only if you're really dynamically driving. It actually helps give you a sense of speed. It can give the passenger something cool. And actually, when I use it is when I'm recording videos in Taycan to give the audience who's not in the car a sense of what's going on. But would I spend $500 for it if I wasn't a YouTuber? Mm, probably not. You can hear the motors and stuff as is. So that is the standard, or I would say everything you need and nothing you don't. It's still a nice car because again, you're buying a brand new Porsche. So we did want some luxury features on there, but we kept it under 150 grand. Certainly the car got more expensive for the new model here, but you get a lot more car, um, you know, just to run through everything. We went with a cool color. We spent the money on the wheels. We got a colored Porsche Crest, $190, no big deal. Standard interior, standard seats. We did add the center rear seat. Rear axle steering, 100% worth it. Spec that. Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, unless you're a really keen driver, you could probably knock that off. But again, I really like that one. The brake calipers and high gloss black. That's really depending on the color choice. Performance Battery Plus. The standard battery is still going to be great. Um, but just get the big battery. It's like so much more worth it. I think, uh, for 5,500 bucks, just the charging performance alone to go from 270 kilowatts to 320 kilowatts. That's worth it. If you're going to go for the standard battery in the new car, just save the money and get an old used big battery one. My impression, uh, sport chrono with push to pass, go for it because we already got the big battery really nice. And um, two speed, you know, all the stuff standard. We did do the glass roof. Some people like it. Some people don't. I like it. Um, interior, we kept it very basic. We got the the storage package, 280 bucks, and the heated steering wheel and race techs, 200 bucks. Pretty cool. The tech, we went pretty big on the tech. Surround view, Inno Drive, Bose dash cam, and of course, it comes with one year of 30 minute DC fast charging at Ele Electrify America for free. So there's our car. Uh, that's the the basic spec for you. Let's now go and spec the Dream Tycon because it's going to be like a hundred thousand dollars more than this one. So again, it's a dream because you really have to be committed <laughs> to understanding you're going to lose a lot of money when you go to sell that car. But to a, most people buying Tycons, I always have to explain, this is the toy. This is the, I've made it. I'm getting the coolest electric car, whether you have a 918 in the garage or a GT4 RS or something really fun. And this is your daily or you're stretching into the car, but it's your dream. And you're just going to get every option you want. A lot of people do go crazy. So let's build the dream spec. Well, now it's time to spec the really nice one. So let's go to Tycon. Let me know if you want me to do a Macan, by the way, a separate episode, but I can go through those. And, um, you know, all of these are very much personal preference, but I, I'm just trying to say, okay, let's do a reasonable sedan build. We did the 4S and let's go pretty crazy for the Cross Turismo builds. Now I have done some testing here and I do think there is a big difference going from the 4 to the 4S and then from the 4S to the turbo 
I have not driven the Turbo and Turbo S back to back yet, but just for the price increase, you do get a lot more standard equipment from the Turbo S Cross Turismo. Ceramic brakes, painted arches, nice stuff comes in there, a lot of performance features. Um, but actually, uh, spec for spec, you're still going to be about $20,000 more uh, for a Turbo S over a Turbo. And I don't think it's actually worth it. It's 0.2 seconds, 0 to 60. Yeah, pretty big power thing, but the Turbo is going to be so fast anyway. Uh, my recommendation is to go for the Turbo. Again, we're doing a dream build but also dream realistic build, but we're going to be deep in the $200,000 range by the time we're specking this. So let's go through and let's spec the turbo. Now it is so funny to see a long roof Tycon uh, turbo $178,000 base price on the arrow wheels. I'm just not sure that's the move folks. Uh, so we're going to go through and first select color. They have the dreams colors, but also the legends colors. And here's where for less than three grand, you can get one of the best colors on the planet, oak green metallic. It fits the cross Turismo vibe perfectly. I can change it over to nighttime. It's such a cool, deep, rich green. And if you really want to see what this looks like, I did that studio tour with the, um, green, this oak green metallic when I filmed the new Tycon uh, in the studio in, uh, in just outside of Vysok. Now you can go crazy and go paint to sample or paint to sample plus, which is like you can literally send in your own color and they'll produce the car in there, which is awesome. Uh, but I think with oak green there for me personally, that's the color of my choice. And you can choose whatever color you'd like for 30 grand or at least in, in the uh, paint to sample options. There's a lot that are in there. I can just show you really quickly. Maybe I already showed you on the 4S for some reason. There we go. Olive green is probably what I want to do. I wanted to do NATO olive, but olive's pretty close. And I'm not sure NATO olive is, is part of this package, but black olive. Oh, here's NATO olive. That would have been my color. I would have done this one. Um, but I think oak green's pretty close and it's not worth 10 grand more for just that hue, slight hue difference in green. Moving on, wheels. We're doing, again, Tycon Turbo. I think you go for the 21-inch Aero Blades. The 20-inch off-road design wheels are ugly. The 20-inch Tycon Turbo S design wheels are ugly, I think. And these 21-inch Cross Turismo design wheels are really nice. But I don't know. There is just something so nice about that 21-inch wheel. I think it's the perfect blend, personally. So this is what I would do here. I think it's a great wheel. Boom. It's on the car. We're going with it. I don't think we should do any special wheel colors. You can like paint the inserts, but they just look so bad <laughs> when you do that. So let's not go crazy there. And again, I think it's important to go with a, at least where I live in Colorado, if you're in Florida or Southern California, you don't need to do this, but a summer set and a winter set. These would be my winters. The Martian wheels, I'm talking for my case, Drew's wheels would be my main, you know, three season tire with a, with a summer tire on there. Um, Cool. Let's continue to the interior. My preference, totally up to you. It's a $570 option to go for the leather interior in black and chalk. We're going to do the interior accents in dark silver. It just adds a nice little touch, a little classy, uh, looks good. And again, if I zoom around to show you guys the seats, you can see this dual toneness. And I really like this interior. And uh, you know, visually, it's great. Yeah, it's going to require some upkeep, especially with the dogs. I think it's worth it. I love a light color interior. The Tycon's not big. I want anything to make it feel bigger on the inside. And just having a light interior certainly does that. I also do like the leather-free uh, options, but yeah, th this is how I would do it. Comfort seats, 14-way for me. We've already discussed why. We'll do the rear two plus one and we'll go massage plus ventilation. We're building a luxury spec car and a performance spec one. So let's go for it. Now we have an off-road design package for the Cross Turismo. Personally, I don't think it looks any much different. You get extra canards, little air flaps. I'll just show you here if I can put it in turbo night. You get... Um, Extra flaps, a little bit different front skirt, like more plastic on the car, especially around the rear. You get all of this extra stuff. To me, it just looks a little bit weird. I don't know what makes it off-roady. Maybe it's protecting some stone stuff. I would paint protection film the car anyway. I think it looks better without that. So let's just go with it off, personally, is my choice. We are going to do the premium package, which gives you ionizer, gives you surround view, gives you head-up display, soft-closed doors, uh, and at a discount, we actually, it's only 
just under $4,000 because we've already selected the uh, ventilated seats uh, option. And so now we're just paying for the uh, massage upgrade, if you will. The remote park assist is where you can like drive the car forward and back remotely outside the car. I don't really think people need to do that on a $200,000 car. If you want to spend an extra 500 bucks for something you'll never use, you can. I don't, I still think it's worth being somewhat prudent here and not going fully crazy. Let's go to the exterior options. What do we have? Uh, you can go crazy with the spec. I'm going to do gloss black window surround just to really bring out that rich green a little bit more. Um, I think that looks really good. Door handles in high gloss black. I wouldn't do the under door puddle light projectors. I would. It's nice at night. You get the Porsche logo on the ground. Really nice light that comes out. I think that's worth it, especially for 300 bucks. Why not? Let's just go for it. And the rear windshield wiper inlays high gloss black. These are all personal preferences. I like a standard plastic rear wiper. I don't really like the high gloss wiper personally, so I wouldn't do that. Absolutely would spec the roof rails though. I think they're sort of needed on this car. They look great. They don't hurt your range much. You can put a roof box on there. I think it should be standard. I don't even know why that's an option. We're going to skip most of the details. The turbo on the back is on the turbo night color, which I think actually looks really good against the green. So I would probably keep that because that matches the underskirt color inside here on the side, the side skirts and the front lip, as well as the Porsche badge. If I can zoom in here and show you guys, these are all turbo night, so it'll match perfectly. So we're going to do that and we're going to come to performance. And because we're doing a luxury and performance build, we're going to go full send. So rear axle steer, absolutely best value there. Porsche active ride. Absolutely. As a driving enthusiast for a Taycan, having the ability to lift the car really quickly when you open the door to have that huge variability of performance from max comfort to max performance, go for the active ride. It's seven grand, but you're literally interacting with it. Every inch you move the car. It's so awesome. I would do that. Another big option I would do surprisingly on Tycon, and I typically don't recommend it though, is to do the Porsche uh, ceramic brakes, the carbon ceramics. When you go on track days, so carbon ceramics, you can actually burn them up. But when you're driving quickly on the street, or if you're doing a track day and you're not just pounding on them over and over and really overheating them, they last a long time. They produce little dust. They do make some squeaking noises that you will hear some NVH if you're really abusive on them. But Porsche brakes are actually pretty quiet compared to others. I just want the maximum braking performance. It's a heavy car in the canyons. When I drive hard, we're maxed out. I'm going ceramics. That's my recommendation. And uh, if you go for Turbo S, Cross Turismo ceramics are standard, by the way. So we're going to go for all of this. We are not going to do the HD matrix lights in blue. It comes standard with the standard ones. We're also not going to get the illuminated Porsche logo in the light strip. I thought it was standard on turbo and turbo S it apparently is not. You have to pay for it, but again, we're not here to advertise Porsche for free. Uh, so I'm going to take that off. I think it looks cleaner without it. There's no need for it. Not super into it. The one thing I do really like though is the panoramic roof with variable light control. It's a really cool option where, um, you know, you basically have a slider in the screen that can change to these cool patterns. I explained it when we did the standard build. I would totally do that. And then, yes, thermally and noise insulated glass. We're going maxed out. I'll deal with the lower cell, uh, cell service. I'll deal with the toll pass stuff. I like to have, you know, a really quiet car. And, you know, if we're already going all out, let's just go all out. So I would skip all the deviated stitching, interior trim. Don't really need any of this stuff. It's just, uh, you, sp you can spend so much money and get so lost in this. And even though we're doing sort of a dream build, there's no no need for these, these topics here. I think sun visors and leather, seat consoles and race techs, like you just seat backrest and leather for almost two grand. You just don't need this stuff. Uh, in my opinion, but I think you should go for that um, race tech steering wheel. Like we mentioned when we did the uh, 4S build, just flip the camera around here. Really cool configurator and a really cool steering wheel. So I would do that, but that's personal preference. Uh, again, vehicle keys painted. There would only be one Porsche in my garage. So that's all I need. You could do pedals in aluminum. Sure. Door sill guards and brushed aluminum. You can go crazy. Illuminated custom door sills. I just don't think you need to do any of this stuff. So yeah, that's all personal preference, but I would not, my personal preference is not to do it. 
Night vision assist. Hmm. It's quite expensive if you break it. There's very little benefit because at least for me, I don't drive at night very much around here actually. And if I do, I'm kind of on a highway where they're lit anyway. Um, so I'm not doing much back road driving. Now that's not to say I'm not going to move out of town one day and be out in the countryside and have to worry about deer and moose and whatever else we have up here in Colorado. I don't know. I think you're already going to be spending two. We're at $211,000. This is 1% of the car's purchase price. Let's go for night vision. We're going all out. Let's just go crazy. Have fun. We're building the dream Tycon. It's a cool feature. It, you feel like you're in Top Gun when you pull it up. It's just, again, another one of those cool things you can add. So why not? It is useful and it can save you uh, from an accident, of course. I used it on the Autobahn quite a bit when you I was really hammering and it was nice then. And of course, I want Inno Drive with uh, active lane keeping because this is going to be a road tripper. So yes, absolutely. Interior comfort. I would absolutely do the advanced four zone climate control and across Turismo. It gives extra climate control in the rear with a nice screen, but more importantly, I can keep the rear of the car maxed out on AC. So the dogs don't get hot. That is a really nice function. Uh, and the sedan, I don't think you're fitting big dogs in there and the cross Turismo. Absolutely. hundred percent going with that. And of course the preparation for the dash cams, just nice, nice to have. Let's go for it. We are going to do the passenger display. Alyssa loves the passenger display as a road tripper. She can have her own data. She can watch TV on there or, or YouTube or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't think you actually pull up YouTube. You can pull up other stuff, but it's just cool. We're going maxed out. Let's go for it. You don't need it, but for again, 1400 bucks on a $218,000 car, send it. Same thing with the sound system. Bose is standard on this one. Go for the Burmester. It bumps. It rips. It's awesome. It's a lot of money. It's really for the true audio file. Will most people appreciate it? Probably not. I will. This is, I'm sort of building Kyle's cross Turismo here. That's what I would do. We don't need the rear seat entertainment stuff. And I think I would do the electric sports sound on this one only because I'm making YouTube videos and it's a good way for me to show the speed of the car without someone being in the car. They can hear what's going on in the background. It's a little bit engaging for the passengers. If you do launch control, people can hear it from the outside. It's kind of cool. So, okay, let's 500 bucks. Let's go for it. So that means that the dream Tycon spec, again, not a Turbo S. Turbo S would be about, uh, I think I spec'd the same car, Turbo S, the way I would want it. It was 250,000. Here we're at 225, so about a $25,000 Delta plus or minus. I don't think it's worth it for the Turbo S. We already got most of the power, mostly everything here. Unless they lease out similar or you just want to go crazy, you can go Turbo S. But here's a pretty insane build. It's still $220,000 for a Taycan that you know is going to be worth a lot less in a few years on the used market. And um, yeah, there we go. 224, 415. So we built the first one was 145 and this fully maxed out one is 225. It shows you can go crazy uh, with the options if you want to. And again, this still is everything I would want, but nothing. I mean, there's some nice things that I don't need. Night vision, passenger display, Porsche active ride. I guess I could live without, but yeah, you get the idea. You can go crazy with the options. So I can't thank you enough for joining me for this out of spec reviews. No, out of spec guide video. Let me know if you want me to do other vehicles, specking them out. The Porsche stuff is difficult because there's a lot of options. Again, it's a long video, but if you're going to be spending over $200,000 or even over $100,000 on a new Taycan, I hope this was able to uh, shed some light on the options the way I would spec them coming from a car enthusiast perspective, but also someone who appreciates technology and driver assistance. Um, you know, you can really go into the nitty gritty and spec the car exactly how you like for your preferences. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in another one again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>